Hi folks, Doyle Dykes here. Welcome to my Sunday String Along. I'll be stringing along today with my beautiful Olsen guitar on this fine Easter Sunday morning. Happy Easter, folks. Folks, uh, these are great old songs too. Uh, Room at the Cross for You. And uh, they're Easter songs or songs about the cross, songs about our faith. And uh, there's a song that I wrote years ago. Let's see uh, if I can remember.
I can't imagine how he felt kneeling there when he prayed, Father, let this cup pass. Oh, but let your will be done. I can't imagine how he felt standing there when the crowd cried Pilate give us Barabbas and crucify the one they call God's son I can't imagine how he felt hanging Soldiers laughing, and his mother crying, and oh, the pain that he felt. But it was love for you and me that put him there. Now, no one's laughing, cause when he died. From the cross still reigns today And the blood he shed Still washes sins away And salvation can be yours When you say I believe the power from the cross still reigns today. Don't you? I can't imagine how he'll feel on that day. And he'll say sorry I never knew you depart from me take him away but oh the joy it shall be when he'll say well done my child you're going home with me and the power from the cross still reigns today and the bloody shed still washes sins away and salvation can be yours when you say I believe the power from the cross I believe the power from the cross still reigns Amen. Well, I had some other things I was going to do today. Folks, I don't want to take too much of your time. And, uh, oh, man. But Easter is a very, very special, is a very special day. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He has risen. And uh, he is risen. I want to, um, I think I will. I think I'll go ahead and play this other song. And 
Maybe I'll talk a little less today, but uh, I know you have lots to do, and uh, it's been a beautiful time here in Tennessee, just beautiful weather, and uh, I've been enjoying a little time. I've been away so much since February, pretty much. Wow, Mr. Kirk Sand built this guitar. He, he still speaks. But it's good to have been home a few days here, and uh, even though I had to do taxes, but uh, Kelly Barber called me a while ago. I, I said, I think I'd rather be in Texas than be doing my, my taxes. But we've, we've had a busy week this week, but it's great to be at home. And happy Easter to everybody. I, I'm, I'm normally in California or someplace else, but it's really great to be just here with you guys today. So uh, uh, it's an old song, a couple of them I put together. Thank you. 
Easter, folks. And, uh, you know, he is risen. He is risen indeed. You know, when I, and I, brethren, when I came to you, I came not with excellency of speech or power of wisdom declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling. My speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and the power of God, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of the Almighty God. Amen. You know, uh, this string along is, is not about me. It's, it's about Him. It's all about Him. It's all about knowing Him and having a relationship with the Lord. And uh, if I can hold this, let me put my thumb pick down, folks. But, uh, you know, uh, I've never claimed anything. I've never, I've, I'm not trying to get you to join up with that. Well, you can join my uh, YouTube channel if you want to. You can subscribe and like it and send it to other folks and maybe some people will, um, you know, more people will come along with us. I mean, that'd be fun, but uh, but I'm not asking anything from you. I mean, you know, we, uh, we do this and I do this because it's my passion and my family's also involved because when I do this, it, it's a sacrifice in a lot of ways, but it's, it's a wonderful thing. It's, it's re actually, it's a giving. I shouldn't say it's a sacrifice. For all that Christ has done for us, he is worthy of anything that we could ever give to him. And so, but it's not about me. It's not about uh, my ministry and, and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's about just knowing the Lord and just having a relationship with him and and realizing that he is who he says he is. He is King of Kings and he is Lord of Lords. And, uh, and he died for us. I, I, Alistair Begg, a, a preacher, I enjoy listening to him preach. And he said this, um, it was a great man from Scotland, uh, Scotland originally, he's up in Ohio. He's a great pastor. He says, you know, the cross, at the cross, the innocent, it takes the place of the guilty in order that the guilty might be treated like the innocent. And that's what Jesus did for us. He took our place and he paid the price and the ransom for our sins. And, and uh, I'm so thankful that he did. Uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, 1 through 9, I mean, there's so much here. I don't, um, let's just read. And now let me remind you, since it seems to have escaped you, brethren, of the gospel, the glad tidings of salvation, which I proclaim to you, which you welcome and accepted, and upon which your faith rests. You know, this must be the Amplified. I thought this was the uh, King James, but that's okay. It's good. And by which you are saved, if you hold fast and keep firmly which I preach to you, unless you believed at first without effect and all for nothing. For I pass on to you first of all what I had received, also received from Christ the Messiah, the Anointed One, died for our sins in accordance to what the Scriptures foretold, and that he was buried, and there he arose on the third day. And as the Scriptures foretold, he also he appeared to Cephas, or Peter, and then to the twelve, and then he later showed himself to more than 500 brethren at one time, the majority of whom are still alive, but some have fallen asleep in death. And then he goes on to say, and uh, well, let me keep reading here. Afterward, he was seen by James and all the apostles, the special messengers, and the last of all, he appeared to me also. Some people think that it was an angel that appeared to Paul, but it was Christ, it was Jesus. He appeared to me also as to one prematurely and born dead, no, no better than an unperfected fetus among living men. <laughs> and uh, he knew who he was. He knew what he had done and the, the saving and forgiveness uh, and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. For I am the least worthy of the apostles who am, am not fit or deserving to be called an apostle because I once wronged and pursued and molested the church of God, oppressing it with the cruelty and violence. He was a terrorist. Paul was a terrorist. So this is Paul talking about the, uh, the crucifixion. 
Let's go to verse 12. Skip some here. Now, but now if Christ, the Messiah, is preached as raised from the dead, how is it that some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? Some of them in Corinth, he had heard in the church that were preaching, but they didn't really believe in, they preached Christ, but they didn't believe in the resurrection of Christ. So what is there to preach? That's what he's saying. But if there's no resurrection from the dead, then Christ has not risen. And then he says, if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is in vain. It amounts to nothing. And your faith is devoid of truth and, and fruitless without effect or empty, imaginary, and unfounded. It may as well just be a social club. I mean, what? I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't believe that Jesus was alive today and, and he was resurrected. We are even dis discovered to be misrepresenting God, for we testified of him that he raised Christ and whom he did not raise, uh, in case it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised himself. And uh, I want to read through verse 20. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is mere delusion, futile, fruitless, and you are still in your sins under the control and the penalty of sin. And further, those who have died in spiritual fellowship and union with Christ have perished and are lost. And it's to none effect. Anything we've ever done means nothing. If we who are abiding in Christ have hope only in this life, and that is all, then we are of all people most miserable and to be pitied. But the fact is that Christ, Messiah, has been raised from the dead, and he became the first fruits of of those who have fallen asleep in death. I was with Neil Ferry last week. We were talking about that. And uh, we were talking about also uh, where he's from, Mutual of Omaha. They're building the, the, a brand new building. I'm going to tear the old one down. I said, you're kidding. It was beautiful. He was showing them around town. And so they're building the, the biggest, the, the tallest building this side, uh, west of the Mississippi. And, uh, and I said, well, they're still doing like, life insurance, all that, all that planning and all. Yeah, yeah, that's what they do. And so uh, if, if we didn't have the hope of the resurrection, it would be just nothing wrong with life insurance. I mean, you know, I've just recently had to, to, to take care of some things. I've learned about durable power of attorney. I've learned about a living will. I've learned about, you know, health surrogates. I've, I've learned about all kinds of things that... I honestly, even at my age, I should know about all that stuff, but I just didn't. And uh, so we make plans. There's nothing wrong with that. But the thing is, is have you made plans for eternity? It's a, well, yeah, there were other people in the Bible that were raised from the dead. That, you know, well, of course they were. I mean, you know, when you think about the little girl, Jairus' daughter, Jesus, uh, you know, she came to life. He raised her from the dead. Lazarus was raised from the dead. He'd, he'd been in a grave, not just dead. He'd been in a grave wrapped in dead clothes, grave clothes for four days. They said, by this time he stinks. Jesus raised him from the dead. But the little girl and also Lazarus eventually died. You know, again, they died. But uh, the resurrection we're talking about, the Bible says that if we are uh, buried in the likeness of his uh, death, and we are raised in the likeness of his resurrection, his death, his resurrection, not ours. We are raised in the likeness of his resurrection. His resurrection is forever. You'll never die. And that's the difference. In fact, he told Martha, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live forever. And we shall live with him forever. God so loved the world, he gave us only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And this is the only way that could have happened, is for the resurrection to have occurred. And if we look, uh, continue on, well, how would that have happened in Isaiah? How would that have happened? Okay, in verse 50, let's go to, uh, this is also still in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. This is a long chapter, but if you want to know about the resurrection and Paul's writing go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. But I'll tell you this, brethren, 
Flesh and blood cannot become partakers of eternal salvation and inherit or share in the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable, that which is decaying, inherit or share in the imperishable and the immortal. I mean, we're just physical bodies. Uh, talking about being raised from the dead, I had a friend, I mean, we, we have people that can resuscitate people. And you call the paramedics over. I, that happened to a good friend of mine, George Symbolic. He's a worship leader in California. He was dead for, I think he said, seven or eight minutes, which he should, have, he was, he should be completely brain dead. He, he should be a vegetable. But he is alive and doing well because of thank God for his power. But they, they brought him back to life. Of course, I mean, God restored him, no doubt. But George will die physically again, just like you and I and everybody else. But we're talking about something way much, way deeper and, and greater than that. Nor does the perishable, that which is decaying, inherit or share in the imperishable, the immortal. Take notice, I tell you a mystery. A secret truth, an event decreed by the hidden purpose or counsel of God, that we shall not all fall asleep in death, but we shall all be changed and transformed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the sound of the last trumpet call. For the trumpet will sound, the dead in Christ will rise, they will be raised imperishable, free and immune from decay. Isn't that great? And we shall be changed or transformed. And from this perishable part of us, must put on the imperishable or immortal. And this mortal part of us, uh, this nature that is capable of dying must put on immortality, freedom from death. Again, this is the Amplified Bible. And when the perishable puts on the imperishable, and this is that which is capable of dying, puts on the freedom of death, then shall be fulfilled the scripture that says, death is swallowed up utterly, vanquished forever, in and unto victory. Who said that? Isaiah. Isaiah said that. Oh, death. This is how it happens. His wife may have asked him, how did it happen? Oh, I have no idea how that's going to happen. This is how it happened. Oh, death. Where is your victory? Oh, death. Where is your sting? Now, sin is the sting of death, and sin exercises its power upon the soul through the abuse of the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory, making us conquerors through our Lord Jesus Christ. We are conquerors. In fact, we are more, the Bible says that we are more than conquerors. You know, on Easter, uh, you ever think about the Easter afternoon, what actually happened? Uh, well, Easter uh, uh, Sunday morning, and, and when the Mary Magdalene went over to the, uh, uh, and Mary, to the tomb, how are we going to move the stone? And the stone was already rolled away. And they saw this young man dressed in white clothes. And he was angelic. And, uh, and he says, don't be afraid. You know, and they probably thought, well, that's easy for you to say. <laughs> he said, the one you're looking for is not here. He's gone. He is risen. He is alive. And then he says, go your way. Go and tell. Tell others. And, of course, they did. And, you know, when Jesus appeared to his disciples, uh, and not to get into the whole story, but this was on the, in the afternoon of uh, Resurrection Sunday, of Easter Sunday, if you please. And that afternoon, we know what happened in the morning. It was raised from the dead. But that afternoon, he appeared again to his disciples. And what did he tell them? He said, I want you to go, and I want you to tell. Tell others and, and be witnesses. As you go, be witnesses into the whole world, you know. And so that's... If you really want to celebrate Easter, that's the best way to celebrate it, is to tell other people about him. You know, when I got saved, I was just, you know, 11 years old, and uh, I'll never forget it. I mean, I, I raised my hands, and a lot of you have heard this story before. But I, I, I made an altar out of a, a chair I was sitting in, and of course, the church was going on. And... Nobody told me to say this, but I raised my hands and I said, Lord, please give me a job to do and I'll always tell people about you. Give me a job to do. Well, I think that's, this is what that is, you know. I love playing the guitar, but I love telling the story of Jesus. I love talking about him. It's my passion. And I, I do it because I love him and I love to do it. 
and going through school and uh, you know it could have been, it was challenging at times and I have a little my little Gideon Bible down here and in fact I'll get it you'll see the top of my head here for a second folks this is not the Gideon Bible but it's very one very similar that the Gideons give out and if you look in the front of it you'll see a there's always a cross here. Oh, here it is. I had it backwards. But uh, there's a cross, or a, I'm sorry, a flag, an American flag here. And uh, <laughs> uh, I carried this thing with me all the time. And I, I remember it was after I won the, the contest in the ninth grade talent show. I lost eighth grade. but I play it. And uh, so uh, when I won the contest, here was the trophy. There it is. I still have it from the ninth grade. Kirby Smith Jr. High and uh, most talented Doyle Dykes, and you can see that. And this kid approached me, and uh, his name was Harold. He was a friend of mine. He was a lot more popular than me. And I wasn't athletic. I was just a, a guitar nerd even then, still am. But, uh, but he knew I was a Christian. He said, man, you seem to have it all together. And uh, maybe you've heard this story before, but I, I think it bears repeating today. And, uh, and I'd never had anybody said, man, you have it all together. But I guess after I won that, and I don't know, but, you know, and uh, he said, you still have that little book in your, in your uh, or you have that little book with you? I said, yeah, I thought he was going to make fun of me. I didn't know what he was getting at. And, uh, and he said, is there anything in that for me? And, he, and I said, well, sure. You know, and we were in study hall, which they they actually closed uh, uh, the auditorium, and they brought all the students in that that had uh, th that particular session or that you know that those classes off, and so they they just had to put it somewhere. So they call it study hall, and so and they turned the lights down. I don't know why they did that, but the lights were kind of low. You couldn't hardly even study. I didn't know what the point was. But he, uh, he said, you have that little book on you? I said, sure. And I said, come on over here. And he jumped over the seat and sat right next to me. And I opened uh, Romans chapter 10 and verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And, uh, and I said, uh, Harold, do you believe in Jesus? He said, yes. I said, you believe he, he was the son of God, that he lived and he died on the cross for our sins? And he said, yeah. I said, do you believe he was raised from the dead? you believe he's alive today? He said, yeah, man, I do. I said, Harold, you want to receive Christ in your heart? He said, yeah. And I, and I led him to Christ right there in, the, in that study hall. And I'll never forget it. Uh, and then when he received Christ, I said, well, don't forget the next verse. So what is that? I said, for with the heart. Man believes unto righteousness, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And he said, what does that mean? I said, tell others about him. Confess him as, as Lord of your life. Confess him as your personal Savior. And he gave me one of the best uh, compliments I think I've ever had in my whole life. He said, well, I'll be like you. I won't be ashamed of him. I'll talk about him. You know, and that's the whole thing about what Paul was saying. He said, don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed of our testimony. He told Timothy, your grandma had it, your mama had it, I, and I'm convinced you have it. Stir up that gift. I preached on that recently. I've spoke on that, on the string along. And he said, and don't be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, you know? And he was just, just stirring him up to, to tell others about Christ. And that's, don't be ashamed to tell others. Don't be ashamed. So if you really want to, uh, to celebrate Jesus, to celebrate the resurrection, and then tell others about him. It was a few months later, and, and uh, I didn't see Harold for a while, and, and I went to another school in, uh, in Jackson High School there in Jacksonville, Florida. And I asked one of my buddies, I said, have you seen Harold? And he said, no, man, you, you didn't hear about Harold. And I said, what? He said, uh, well, he went to the beach, and we lived in Jacksonville. And he said he was only in chest deep of water, but the undertow took him out to sea. And they, they lost him, you know, he said before, he, before they could get to him, they finally got to him, but before they could, he, was, he had drowned. And, 
you know, at first I, I started to cry, and then I stood there for a moment, and I said, Harold is with the Lord. Harold is with Jesus. You see, because he was buried in the likeness of his death and raised in the, now he's raised in the likeness of his resurrection. And what if there's no resurrection? He's, I mean, what are we going to preach? What is all this for? You see, you might as well say, you know, eat, drink, and be merry. Read that in chapter 15, 1 Corinthians. Sorry, folks, I didn't do a very good job of that, but... You know, he said, uh, you know, it may as well be like the rest of the world. For today we live and tomorrow we die. No, there's a whole lot more to it than that. We're, it's just the beginning. Father God, I thank you for, for the joy that we have in Christ. Thank you for the reality of the cross and, the, and also the death and the, uh, but most assuredly we believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that you are alive today. And Lord, that puts... That sets us on a, tough, a, a totally different level. That's what changed the history of the world. That's what changed the history of the universe, that we can live forever with you. And we receive that and believe that today. If there's anyone who hasn't received Christ, say, Lord, somehow today, I believe this, and I want to receive you as Lord of my life. Receive me right now in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And I believe it's happened right now where you are. This is the best Easter you've ever had in, in your entire life. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. Right now. And now I am happy all the day. Amen. God bless you folks. Happy Easter and thank you so much for joining me on my Sunday string along.